Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Manero with J-Man Speaks coming to you live. That's right, live and direct from our global headquarters here in Rochester, New York. And today, we have a new we have a new segment. It's called Fire Friday, okay? We're still going with the A-Team, but today's Fire Friday. Fabulous international real estate. I am internationally known, and I'm known to rock the microphone because I get smart. I mean outrageous. Stay away from me if you're contagious. Real estate loves me. Mortgages adore me. Even the ones who never met me like. But today we're going to Puerto Rico. Uh, last month we were in Costa Rica. So once a month we're going to go to an international destination with an expert from that area. Feet on the street. Knows what they're talking about. And bringing you all the best. So today we have on the show, her name is, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Veronica Montalvo. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Welcome from sunny Puerto Thank Rico. Thank you. Uh, you're amazing just for being Thank here today. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, uh, why don't you just introduce yourself, tell them a little bit about who you are and where you're from, obviously San Juan, Puerto Rico, but where you're, where you're from originally, and, and then we'll get right into it. Okay. Thank you so much for inviting me, Jeremiah. Uh, so my name is Veronica Montalvo and I am, uh, was born and raised actually in Connecticut, state of Connecticut. So I'm from the States originally, but Puerto Rico, uh, Puerto Rican. So I was born and raised coming to this island. Um, my parents would say, you weren't born on the island, but the island was born in you. So oh, act that. accordingly. And so I, we always felt a, a huge affinity to this place and to the people and to our people. Um, <clears throat> very proud, very proud Puerto Rican. So um, from Connecticut, and I, I actually relocated about five years ago and uh, just shortly before Maria, actually. And... Uh, Became a first responder, and the rest is history. This is it's it's home now. Yeah, well, you know, and and I wanted to talk about your background because it's so important that you you do what you do know what the United States is like, what it's like to live here, what the real estate is like here, and I, I think that's important. I'm gonna put in my my hat here. Um, as you guys are watching, just comment hat or no hat, just so I know I'm going with my my Caribbean look today. This is called a guayabera. Oh, hat for sure. Um, we're, hat we're for sure. Finishes the look. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Veronica likes it, so I'll keep it on for a little while, but I don't know if I want to mess up my hair, but I have enough gel that probably won't get messed up. Um, so you started there as a first responder. So I'm thinking what you went right around Hurricane Maria. Was that when you kind of went back? Well, no, I yes, I actually came slightly before, um, just a few, few months before, actually, and um, was back and forth consistently. Uh, I had a home in Connecticut. My family's still in Connecticut. So um, it wasn't until Hurricane Maria that I really felt like, yeah, this is, you know, I had, I had many callings and opportunities to leave the island at that time. And to be honest, you know, it just, every calling became clearer and clearer that I had to stay here and, and be part of the solution. So, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so you, it was you were, just before Maria. You were there for the hurricane. Yes. Like you went through it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. What yeah. was that like? Ooh, uh, unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life. I mean, having been from Connecticut, we, you know, we aren't, uh, we don't have that <laughs> besides the snowstorms, right? We don't, we don't have a, a, a ton of natural disasters. So it was, um, it was quite scary, actually quite scary. And we, <clears throat> many of us weren't as prepared as we should have because, uh, or if you could call Hurricane Edma was just weeks before and it was mild, <laughs> mild by, by comparison to many storms. So um, we had kind of a limited time and, and people kind of slept, I think, a little bit on the on the preparation for it, you know, not not really knowing what to expect or expecting it to be so bad. So, you know, I um, lost a lot of my belongings, most of my personal belongings um, in, in that. Um, but, you know. Um, if there's anything that I've learned um, about this island is that despite economic um, uh, declines and government um, incension and, and just the, the character of the people, the resilience is, I mean, it is phenomenal. I mean, uh, you know, in the last few years, it's a class in character. It's a class, it's really a, uh, a class in, in fortitude and strength and, and resilience. Man, I, I love that because it's such a resilient people that everything that, that happened, I think you're right. Like 
they weren't really, you know, you have that many hurricanes. You're kind of used to it. Like, oh, yeah, no, yeah, this is going to be the bad one. And it, and it really was. And just the resiliency of the people to know that, like, yo, we're coming back. We're going to be back. And I think that's what kind of what we're talking about today. Like, we are on our way back because then it's like, well, then the pandemic hit. And that's a whole other story. Uh, but tell us a little bit about, like, the real estate market right now. Like what, what's going on there? Um, what are you seeing? What are the trends? Is it a seller's well, market it, like the rest of the world or? It is. I mean, there's, there's, you know, higher demand for, for. I lost your audio about the real estate opportunities there. Big differences. Financing isn't readily available in Costa Rica. There are some real estate opportunities there. You can purchase, but you can't get a mortgage. Um, hey, Anita Bryan, what's up? My family is in Salinas and San Juan. Look at that. We're I knew I knew we were connected some way. We might even be related, right? Might even be cousins. Salinas. I mean, it's not that that big of a town. Do 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 do. Okay, if you visited. Puerto Rico, please put your favorite towns that you've visited in there, in the comments as we, this is just called stretching and segueing. Oh, there we go. Vettel's back in the building. Um, oh, I can hear you. We're good. See? Um, Sorry about that. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. No, we can hear you fine now. Look, at there's one thing I can do is tap dance. I'm like, hello, my darling. Hello, my darling. You're too funny. Well, let's hope. Let's hope yeah. I don't lose power on this anytime no. soon. Was that what happened? Your your phone died, or? Um, no, no, I'm not sure, but it is it is blinking that right now. But no, I I think there was. I don't know. If, I'm in the line of uh, the airport, so uh -oh. every once in a while we'll have a, a surge. So let's hope it doesn't happen again. <laughs> Well, we have uh, Anita Bryan's watching. She has six uncles and six aunts there, so anything is possible. She has family in Salinas, Puerto Rico. That's where I was talking about. My dad's from there. So I'm like, we might even be cousins. Who knows? That's, you know what I'm saying? It's a very <laughs> real possibility here. I, I can remember growing up where it's like, this is your cousin. I'm like, hi. Like, there's so many cousins you meet, like, you've never met before in your life. Oh, right. man. It's funny. All right. So where we left off, you left us on a cliffhanger. It was almost going to be like, tune in next week to see what Veronica <laughs> has to say about <laughs> about. So you, uh, Puerto Rico real estate, is it a seller's market like the rest of the world? What, what are you experiencing? Yeah. I mean, I think in certain certain markets, it is absolutely still a seller's market because, you know, demand is high and, and supply is low. Same same impact of the pandemic. People have evaluated their living conditions and want to upgrade. And so Certainly, you know, they are looking to, to have a bigger space, a space that they're more comfortable being in um, more and uh, can separate their work life from their personal life. So we still find that as well. Absolutely. Especially for turnkey, turnkey uh, residences. Yeah. So the, I, I know we've experienced that, uh, especially like New York Metro and a lot of the bigger markets where it's like, yo, if I wait, so you're saying I can work remotely. Why the hell would I live where I live now? Have a little you know, studio apartment for $5,000 a month when I could live on an island paradise. Like, I'm out. Well, that's that's just it, right? I mean, that's the whole thing in that uh, people, and that's the lore of Puerto Rico because, I mean, Puerto Rico has always been of, of interest uh, for culture and, and entrepreneurship. But, you know, with the with the beneficial tax laws and um, the ability now to more work, to work more rem remotely. And let's be honest, you know, a couple of years back, many offices weren't digitalized. You know, they weren't um, right. even operating in a way that you could handle most of the business online as you would in the States. It's something that, you know, I took very much for granted until I got here. So I had to say in regards to, you know, uh, some will say that Hurricane Maria it was opened up a lid, right, in terms of issues, infrastructural problems that the island had long before the hurricane. Well, and some might say in terms of the pandemic, the uh, the benefit has been that, you know, it's been straggling in terms of, you know, making advances from a digital perspective. And so the, the pandemic definitely helped expedite that. Yeah, kind of exposed it in a way, right, and said, 
Mm -hmm. We got to do that. Mm -hmm. So in, in regards to that, because we, we were um, while you were gone, I talked about we did the last one we did was in Costa Rica. And, and mm -hmm. my cousin, who's Puerto Rican, who lived in Texas, visited there. And then now he, now he lives there. But there is very much Internet issues depending on where you are. Uh, are you seeing, you still have, I mean, we're live streaming right now. It doesn't seem to be any kind of issues, but is that kind of dependent on whether you're in the, the bigger cities? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I think, I think access, you know, to, to greater technology and for, for sure in certain areas, but it's making strides. I mean, fiber optics is, is very much being introduced, for instance, in old San Juan. Um, it's being implemented um, right now, so expect it to be, you know, really robust. And that's, you know, that's going to be tremendous for not just for tourists, but for business people that are working from the area for sure. Okay. Now, um, again, while we were gone, I was like just jumping from topic to topic because that's what ADHD does. But the <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, in regards, like when we were in Costa Rica, they did, you can't get a mortgage there, right? They're not readily available. You got to get hard money, or you got to come in with cash. Uh, can you get a mortgage in 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 Puerto Rico without without any issues? Absolutely. I mean, very much. You know, we we have you know uh, same banks operating from the states as well. Here, we have other banks, obviously that that you may not have in the states, but the same the same process, the same qualification process, mm -hmm, very much the same uh, federal rules and incentives. Mm -hmm. Banco Popular. Um, always remember that as a kid it was my favorite. <laughs> favorite bank to go to <laughs> Banco right. Popular. Um, but so first time home buyer programs, like could, if, if I wanted to not first time home buyer, but let's just say home buyer, uh, owner occupied programs. Could I buy a home with like 5% down? You know, if I was going to move there and like legit sell my, it's the same, home. it's the same programs. Absolutely. Okay. It's the same Excellent. Yeah. In that Man, regard, so there's not, there's not a whole lot of complicated complications yeah yeah because we i mean we're seeing that and as i talk to a lot of people throughout the country in regards to inventory shortages so many people are reluctant to put their ho their homes in the market because they don't have a place to go some of them are empty nesters or retirees and they're like i want to sell this house and go someplace nice and, and so it's good to know like hey you could sell it cash out if there's no mortgage on it, right? And still buy something with interest rates being so low with a minimum down payment. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the one thing that, you know, from a banking perspective, it's going to be difficult. You're not going to get a beachfront property financed at this point, um, given that, you know, without insurance, which most most properties at this point kind of around the island are, are facing the same issues, um, banks typically won't finance uh, a home uh, without the, insurance, the property insurance on the home, on the whole property. That doesn't, I have to say that doesn't ha actually deter people from buying properties. Right. Um, no, it just, uh, creative financing is, is very real. And I mean, this is, and we didn't talk about this beforehand, but it's just kind of a thought. Could I, could I do a 1031 exchange where like I'm rolling the, you know, I, I sold a property here in the States, made some money. I'm going to defer some tax li liability and just I believe so. I haven't actually okay. worked on that myself, but I, I believe so. In fact, it came up recently in a conversation I was in, um, and I would, you know, I think we talked about this. I think the best thing to do is, is to direct you, which I do have great CPAs and attorneys that I, I work with and I refer, and all of, all of the questions, personal questions, should be directed towards them because they're the experts. You heard it here, folks. We are not accountants, <laughs> nor will we play one online, okay? Uh, but That's it's right. when, even when it comes to 1031 exchanges, uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a good way to, to avoid capital gains tax. There's there's a bunch of things that need to be satisfied. So find a good person who specializes just in 1031s. That's what I would say. Right. Because even some and it's also a good you. time to um, sorry to interrupt, but it's also yeah. a good time to explore opportunity zones, which I mean, almost the entire island constitutes as an opportunity zone. Okay, expand on that. Tell us more about that. Well, again, I'm not an expert, but there, you know, given that it's an opportunity zone, um, any any purchases made here uh, from uh, investments from capital gains, um, there are, you know, it's, a, it's basically a uh, opportunity to uh, not have um, not pay capital gains for as long as you're invested for I, I believe it's like 10 years. Um, and so, you know, that's also a big benefit because basically it's, it's, there's a lot of requirements to it, but, but I mean, bottom line from what I understand is 
you know, it's it's an article of, of how organization, uh, you'd have to organize a fund first before you yeah. can purchase anything. But once you purchase something um, here, it's basically basically no capital gains on the uh, on the profits made for as long as you've invested in it for, I believe it's 10 years. Wow, excellent. Well, let's talk, we talked a little bit about residential and I know you, you do a lot with commercial as well. So if somebody had, because uh, we're seeing like, all over, we call it the retail apocalypse, right? So many businesses, the small mom and pop shops that are just like, we didn't have a reserve fund to last 16 months. We could have lasted 90 days. We could have lasted 180, but a year and a half, you said we couldn't do business. We're gone forever. Uh, and, and it's really drastically changing our neighborhoods, our, our cities, and our communities. Uh, how is that there? Are you seeing a lot of big money, outside money coming in? And is that affecting kind of like i want to call it the flavor right of the island yeah i mean i think you know puerto ricans by nature are very entrepreneurial so you've also seen a lot of internal um businesses boomed you know um we're resourceful you know and it's uh you know uh, disaster is a mother of creativity i think um i think something like that and Yes, we have seen a boom from business. I mean, particularly Act 2022, Act 60s now, people that have businesses that they can import services from the island, they have a very um, generous uh, tax benefit um, that people take advantage of. So we see, we've seen a lot of businesses from that perspective. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic and, and businesses that aren't, weren't very digital, digital ta- digitalized, excuse me, and they weren't on, uh, you know, on the internet for e-commerce, they suffered. We've seen a lot of those business go away. Um, but Puerto Rico is a uh, consumer area. I mean, we are <laughs> we are consumers here on this island. And so um, it's still very attractive to a lot of businesses to come here. In fact, you know, despite the decline, I believe it's um, big retailers such as for instance, I heard that Chick Fil A um, will be oh, coming here. Chick Fil A is in the building. Yeah. Oh shoot! Yeah, so you know, they, there's still it's a, there's a draw still to the island for sure. Okay, uh, we had talked before, and I had and, and we're gonna post links about this, but Act sixty and Act twenty twenty two. You just kind of mentioned the one. Um, what is that all about? Is that incentives for businesses to invest? Is that what it is? Yeah, basically, yeah, they're federal tax incentives laws that were acts, you know, decrees that um, entrepreneurs can file for, you know, depending on what kind of business they fall in the different categories. And there's, you know, a 4% corporate income income tax rate, um, and I think like 0% uh, rates on dividends. So it's, it's, again, it's different for every act. So I don't, I know I'm not an expert on that per se, but yeah. it is a huge benefit for people to come and take advantage of that. I'm a huge fan of earning your money and protecting it, you know, and, and keeping it right as much as possible. Um, the other thing is that you are, you are investing in the economic development of a very, um, you know, of a, of a struggling and, and recovering island. So there's, there's that social impact that is also of benefit to people as it should be, you know, it's not just about making money or, or, or taking advantage of federal tax incentives. It's really about building the community, you know, urban development, making sure that this, you know, the education system and, and other systems that are supporting the people here, the reason why, uh, you know, there's a, there's a benefit um, to, to being here is, is the people at the core. And so I think it's really important that that continues to be the focus of these acts, right? So we're making it sound so attractive too so good to be sometimes things are so good and they are true um but the the mls like we're used to here in the states i want to find a property there it is right so how does it work you guys don't have an mls right it's not we have it we have it um it's not it's not used as prevalently across the island um so you know all properties for sale would not be in a central database but we not really, no. I mean, it's definitely more of a uh, networking and more of a, um, you know, being with an agency and a realtor that is resourceful um, and that will proactively look out for your best interest, which is something that I think is a huge advantage and I think differentiates us here on the island in terms of, you know, realtors and what we do and, you know, again, the level of professionalism and, and how we relate to each other. So not, not just, you know, to the clients, but also as, as real estate experts. Uh, right. here on the island and, so and, yeah the, the level of communication needs to be 
uh, higher, higher and, and much more um, uh, pre prevalent in the processes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, just to speak to being a real estate expert, uh, I know we had talked a little bit like, like, let's talk about where the deals are. And then when, I, when, after we said, after you, you re reply, like, yo, you're going to be this far from the airport. And that's something you should think about if you want to have a vacation rental. And I'm like, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, cause everybody's like, where's the deal? Cause even I know Puerto Rico well enough to know, like there are smaller cities, towns, you go into the mountains, like there, there has to be Beautiful. deals somewhere. But if, if, if I'm somebody who's never been there, who might be watching this, more important than ever to, to rely on an expert like yourself, but talk to where the opportunities are, but then also pros and cons. Like if you're looking to have a short-term rental type of business, or if you're looking to just have a, a, a second home, like two different, very different things. Right. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what we talked about, Dan. So we talked about first and foremost, what is your priority? What do you want to get out of this property? If you want to live in the mountain, the quaint mountains, and you want to, you know, you're, you're not interested in making a passive income with that property. And if it's not occupied for 75% of the time, you're okay with that. Well, I've got great towns for you that you can absolutely found, find amazing deals in. And, um, they're lovely, beautiful areas, you know, um, but if you're talking about being by one of the central airports, which right now the main one is, San Juan, you know, uh, Muñoz Muddy Airport here in San Juan, you're looking at the metropolitan area and the prices are significantly higher than they would be on the West Coast, for instance, uh, which is spectacular. I mean, if you come to the island, I always tell people, you have not seen Puerto Rico if you've only come to San Juan. True. You have Very not. True. Yeah. The truth is there's beauty all 100 by 35. But, but I will say this, the funny thing is people are like, oh, I'm going to Caribbean. You have to go down south to the island, by the way, to touch Caribbean water. So <laughs> you've got to leave San Juan. You've got to leave San Juan. So, you know, um, absolutely you can find deals in some of the smaller towns, but if you want to be in the metropolitan area or in the area in closer proximity to the airport, you got to be prepared to pay a little bit more and probably over asking right now. And so a little bit more, again, I, we're not going to hold you to like, this is what you said the price was, but <laughs> like, what would be in San Juan? Is it going to be more like condo style or can I get a, get a house there? And what are we talking about? Like half a mil, like 500, 600, give me something decent. I mean, or? of course, like, like of it course depends. that's going to depend entirely on the uh, amenities and how modern it is. Um, you know, I've seen, you know, two bedrooms, two bath go for 150. Um, and I've seen two bedroom, two bath go for $575,000. And right? so is, is that, is that a single family detached home or, um, condo? that's going to be primary. That's actually, that's the range for both, but that's, I mean, okay. for condominiums, for condominiums, that one. And then residents, like I said, you're, you're looking at, depending on the area you're looking at, it's going to be probably the one, 150, 165 and above. I mean, you're. You're looking That's at someone bad. being, yeah, yeah. But again, it, it all depends on how much you want it to be completely, you know, remodeled, right? Um, here, you know, just like anything, there is a, a shortage of, of contractors, um, you know, quality construction workers. And so, you know, and then obviously being an island, you have to, you know, factor materials. the cost and the time for materials, right? So these are all things that I like to prepare my clients for, right? So you may pay a little bit more up front, but you're saving a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot oh, of headaches. energy and yeah. heartache, right? Headaches, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, you know something because myself, I'm like, man, you know, I got I got contractors here. I'll fly them to Puerto Rico, but like, just fix this up for me. You could stay in the place for a couple of weeks, you know, work out a deal. But then you also got materials, you got everything else you got to handle, and making sure things are structurally sound and all that. So, uh, properties like the what are the taxes like? Because I, I'm in upstate New York, we are one of the I'm going to give you an example and you're going to you fall out of your chair probably but a hundred thousand dollar house where i live in upstate new york the taxes are forty five hundred dollars a year okay yeah <laughs> so what what is it like there what tell me what the difference is it's not much it's <laughs> high taxes the taxes are high here oh the taxes are high there like give me an yeah. example um, well, I mean, let's see, or maybe, maybe relatively to New York. No. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think like that $200,000 home, you're probably looking at about 3000. Oh, 
girl. Come on now. That is still, that is affordable. That is what we call affordable here. Because, uh, yeah. you know, when you look at your total payment PITI, then it's like I'm buying a $100,000 house here where my, my payment's going to be $1,000 a month. That could get me a $300,000 home in Puerto Rico for that same thousand dollars, you know, if you're looking at total payment and again, I'm, I'm just quoting payments for entertainment purposes only folks. This is not a, yeah, exact oh, for science, sure. But, no, you definitely yeah. have to do your homework for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, what else, you know, people that are, they're looking to come to, to Puerto Rico, talk, talk a little bit about like all the greatness, you know, I kind of put it in the description, but it's like mountains, beaches, uh, rainforests, bioluminescent lagoons. Guys, I'm actually 60 years old. I swam in one of those <laughs> lagoons. I glow. And now look at look at me. Look at how so fresh and so clean and so young looking. So young. You're like Benjamin. But you're like yeah, that's right. Benjamin Button. A year from now, you're gonna see a little baby over here and going, eh, <laughs> swam in the lagoon. So funny. <laughs> yeah. No. I. You know. It's it's just exactly what you said without being redundant. I mean, Puerto Rico has it all. There's really no, there's nothing to envy from a natural resources perspective. I mean, we've got, we do, we have the mountains, we have the, the nation's only rainforest. Um, we have, you know, beaches, spectacular beaches. And, uh, you know, I, for me, like I said, it's a combination of the art and the culture. We have, I think it's the number four, um, conglomeration of engineers. I mean, so there's brilliance on this island, there's education, you know, there's there's a lot to be, you know, while there's still a lot that needs to improve, that's, you know, let's not, let's not mince words. There's a lot that can be improved here. Um, there's a lot as well that you can take advantage of here. And, and a lot of people aren't even aware. I mean, I've had friends uh, visit me that have never been on the island, probably would never have been if I haven't, if I hadn't been here. But have come to see me and they have fallen in love with this island and so my 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 advice i guess um on behalf of, of everyone here is to say you know don't don't make a decision based on you know with the lack of experience come here visit um you know if you can afford it and you can work you know your lifestyle allows for it stay a short time stay a month three months six months explore the different areas you know find some trusted resources uh you know certainly um your neighborhood friendly realtor is always a good idea, but you know, there's a lot of other resources, right? There's just so many, you know, talk to the people, get to know them. And, you know, I think you'll see for No. Oh, there you go. No, you're still there. Go ahead. Oh, you lost audio again. No. Um, well, let's, you muted yourself. That's what happened. It says guest has muted himself. So look for the little mute button. No, one moment. Let me see if I can unmute you. Uh, I don't know what happened again. Let me see. She's gone. She gone. All right. I mean, we were almost finishing up. So let me just finish with this. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero with J Man Speaks. And if you're thinking of investing internationally, Puerto Rico, you can come and go. There's no passport needed at this point to go there. Uh, you've heard all of the advantages. But if you haven't been, the culture, the people, the nightlife, the food, the food, man, I'm telling you, you need to go, you need to visit, you need to check it out. Uh, we're going to put Veronica's information there because, it, look, it, it's so important. Like you heard, there isn't necessarily – an MLS like we're used to here in the States. So whether you're an agent who's watching this, whether you're, you know, a person, a human being who's watching this, who always thought about buying something in Puerto Rico, um, contact me. Um, I'll put you through to Veronica, but I will also put Veronica's information uh, in the comments and, and the description. Wait, I think she's back. Let's see if we got her back here. It's about to close it out, but let's see if we got her back. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hey, Wepa, there we go. Hold on. <laughs> Round of applause. And I need the TJ air horn. Let's go. Okay, anything I you want to say? I told you we're resilient. We keep coming That's back. It. She's like, Jane, you can't keep stop me. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. So, uh, Veronica, anything you want to say in closing? I, I, while you were, again, while you were gone, I was just talking about, like, it's not just that it, real estate's a great investment, but you know, the culture, the people, the nightlife, the food, like 
That's it. When you really experience the island, for that alone, I'd be like, well, well how much I got to pay? I don't give a shit. <laughs> Here we go. I'm staying. I'm good. Let's go. Um, yeah. No, the, the weather, the food, the art, everything that you said, the spirit. I mean, I think that there's just something you can't explain or define. You have to kind of be here and experience it and talk to the people to really understand it. Um, you know, it's not easy to be to be a resident of the island. We have our challenges for sure, but the benefits so outweigh the challenges. And I think that's that's probably the last thing that I want to say and just invite everyone to to consider, you know, visiting if you haven't already. Visit our beautiful island. Meet our people. Look at the robust economy. That's uh, the, the 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 commerces that are building and they're coming here. They're choosing to come here. They know something that 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 you may not, you know, if, if you're not sure, I mean, there's a reason why these, these uh, businesses are choosing to come here and they see the future. And so this is a time to take part of it, to be part of it. And to, to our own people, you know, don't, you know, don't neglect that opportunity to, to, to buy a piece of our island back. You know, there's a lot of people taking advantage of these opportunities and of the better rates, um, whether it's from taxes or, for, or from the incentives. And these are incentives that our own people also qualify for. So I would just say, you know, to, to our own people and diaspora that are considering, absolutely do your research, make your contacts, and, and don't close out Puerto Rico as an option for your future. And call Veronica. And call Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> call to action, folks. All right, so uh, Veronica, I want to thank you for being here with us. I'm going to give you another round of thank applause. You. Here we go. Wait, no, that's not good enough. I want the crowd to <laughs> So we thank, thank you. you so um, you're the best. We're going to post all of your, your information on how they can reach you in the description and the comments. So, Great. folks, thanks for tuning in again. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. Uh, this is Fire Friday, fabulous International Real Estate Friday. We're going to do this once a month. Uh, next month, we're probably going to be in Hawaii. Uh, but stay tuned, stay tuned every Friday, 9 a.m., uh, 18 Fridays, Ask the Experts, Anything Meaningful Friday. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. Make it a great day.